Hello everybody, my name is Sean Keenan, and in this quick tip for Tuts Plus, I'm going to show you how we can get hair systems out of ZBrush and into Maya for use with our projects so that it's going to be skin to the mesh. So as you can see, we're inside of ZBrush here, and we're just looking here at a project that I've um, been using for um, something else. But you can see where we have hair uh, on our model here, and we just need to get this hair system over to Maya. Okay, so to do that, uh, I've already gone ahead and exported out the body geometry that we're going to be taking over to Maya just for um, reference pur purposes here only. Okay, so we need to go ahead and export our curves for our hair here. So you can either come up here to the tool menu. Uh, I'm just simply going to use it over here. Okay, so we'll just come down here to fiber mesh just with our hair selected. We'll come down here to fiber mesh. Okay, we're going to take a look here at our preview settings. And our pre-visualization for our fiber mesh is at 100 there. But we don't want to export at 100 simply because um, when we go ahead and generate the hair systems inside of Maya, this is going to be way too many curves to go ahead and actually wrap the form and generate hair from. So what we want to go ahead and do is make sure that we turn this down to a very, very low number. This way we have no problems whenever it comes to generating the hair. So something like two and below, uh, depending on your system hardware, should be fine to go ahead and generate the hair from. So I'm just going to make sure that I turn it down to zero. I'll go ahead and export these curves out. And I'm going to export them out as a MyASCII file. Okay. So we'll just come in here, jump back over to Maya real quick. And we're going to import our meshes. So we'll just take this from our desktop, and I just have this on a uh, separate screen here. So I'll just go ahead and import our Warthog mesh here, which is basically just going to be our stand-in mesh. And we'll go ahead here and import our curves as well that we need to generate our hair systems from. So you can see that they come into Maya there. And what I want to go ahead and do before anything else, just select all of them. I'll go ahead and freeze the transformations here center the pivot and clear the history off of those. I'm going to add this warthog to its own mesh and its own layer. This way that um, I'm not going to be able to select it at all as you can see there. So we need to generate here uh, on these curves. Let's go ahead and select these curves. I'll add these to their own layer as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename this. Okay, we'll call this the hair curves base main and this is just for demonstration purposes only and um, just so I can work through this just a little bit faster so we don't get a little bit confused in terms of what's going on in the scene here okay so let's go ahead and create hair so we'll go ahead and create our standard Maya hair system and to do that we're just going to come up here to nerves primitive sphere this way it's going to be easier for us to go ahead and just simply transfer that so I'm just going to go ahead and draw that out Go ahead and freeze the transformations and center of the pivots on that as well. Okay, I'm going to hit F5 on my keyboard. Select my NURB sphere. Come up here to hair, create here. Let's take a look at some of our settings. So we want paint effects and NURBs, curves. This way we it's going to be easier for us to go ahead and um, transfer that. We also want it to be a static mesh. And our U and V count here are very low. This way, whenever it comes in, it's not a um, full hair system on that nerve sphere. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And our new hair system gets created here, as you can see. It's right here. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead here and select all of these curves. Come up here to hair. And I'm going to assign hair system. Hair system shape 1. And this is going to go ahead and transfer over. It just takes a little bit of time to go ahead and do there, as you can see. If I go ahead and turn those curves off, okay, you can see that our hair system comes in, and it's looking uh, just about just about the mesh and the system and the hair system we had inside of ZBrush. So you can see where and how easy that is to go ahead and uh, get that hair system shape applied to your model. But there's a major problem here. If I go ahead and turn this uh, Warthog layer back on and try and move this, let me go ahead and just make sure that I select my hair system here. 
the follicles, the output curves. I'm just going to go ahead and add these to their own layer real quick. Just so that I can move this mesh real quick. Okay. If I go ahead and move this mesh, turn those back on, you can see that that hair system doesn't move with the mesh. And that's a problem. That is not good. You would actually want your hair system to be moving with the mesh. So let's go ahead and just put this back to where it was. We'll go ahead and turn this layer off. And we're going to go ahead and turn our curves back on here. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn these, put that NURBS sphere onto its own layer here. We need to go ahead and select all of these curves. Okay, deselect the Warthog mesh here. And we'll go ahead and just reselect the Warthog mesh here. Let me go ahead and just make sure that I get only the curves here. Okay, shift select our Warthog mesh. Hit F2 on your keyboard. And we'll just wrap deform it. And this will just take a little bit of time to go ahead and wrap deform all those curves to the mesh. And those are the curves that we use to generate our hair system from. Okay, so if I go ahead and turn those off, you can see that I can move the mesh. But that hair system actually moves with the model, as you can see. But moving it um, with the hair system on is going to be slow, no matter what you do, because those calculations just aren't in the computer, and it's going to be hardware dependent. Um, I am running a fairly decent system, but even I can't calculate that. So let's say you have a rigged mesh that has hair. If you wanted to animate it, you just simply have to turn that hair off. This way you're going to be able to animate that mesh, and then whenever it comes time to render it, then just simply go ahead and turn those hairs on. So let's go ahead and put this back to zero. And let's go ahead and do this the shaving the haircut method. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this warthog. I'm going to go ahead and freeze the transformations in the center of the pivots here. I'll go ahead and delete everything that isn't the hair mesh inside of Maya. Or that isn't the warthog. Go ahead and delete these curves or these layers as well. Because we don't want... Um, anything in here and it's just going to make it easier for me to go ahead and generate our shave and haircut system from this. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and re-import my curves. And there they are. Okay, just make sure that I re-reference uh, layer our warthog here. I'm going to go ahead and generate a hair system here for us through uh, shave and haircut. Let me go ahead and just make sure that I turn this on real quick. Okay, so I'll select my curves, come up here to shave, create new hair, and I'm going to create it from the SP Blonde, the SP Brunette, or the SP Default. This way they're generating from a curve and not from a um, face on the mesh. Let's go ahead and select that, and you can see that our hair system for shaving a haircut comes in there. And if I take our fiber mesh, go ahead and just add that to the layer, there you can see that our hair mesh comes in and you can obviously come in and uh, edit some of the settings as you see fit and you know go ahead and change whatever but the the main the main um, thing here is we just really want that hair mesh to actually be moving with the geometry okay so what I want to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and skin this warthog real quick just to show you an example that you can animate this and you can rig it Okay, so let's go in here to the side view, and I'm just going to draw it a basically quick joint chain real quick. Um, nothing too complex, as you can see there. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn on my x-ray joints. Shift select my warthog mesh, and I'm just going to go ahead and skin this. Just so that you're going to be able to see that this is going to move uh, with that hair mesh, and the hair mesh is actually going to work here. Okay, so just make sure that I select everything here that is the shave and the haircut system. Go ahead and add that to its own layer. Go ahead and bring back our fiber mesh curves. Because we're going to need them here. Okay, so go ahead and select all those curves. And you can do that in the outliner simply by selecting one curve. Just scrolling down. Shift selecting the last one. Shift select our Warthog mesh or any mesh that you're using to go ahead and generate those curves from. Okay, go ahead and create the former's wrap. 
and you're gonna see that this is just gonna take a little bit of time to go ahead and calculate again as uh, you saw in the last little generation okay so that our hair mesh is now wrapped to formed to our warthog let me go ahead and just turn those off and I'll show you that if we go ahead here and rotate our mesh and I'll go ahead and turn my hair system back on here you can see that our hair system will deform with our mesh so it is possible to go ahead and get your um, your rigs have hair on them and actually have that hair still using uh, the wrap deformer to to be moving with that mesh so um, I would also suggest that if you're going to animate this just make sure that you go ahead and turn off that hair system before you start animating because um, it can take an excessively long time to animate with hair so the ideal um, way to do it is just animate without the hair on and then whenever it comes time to go ahead and render just make sure that you go ahead and turn that uh, hair system back on so let me go ahead and just put these all back here and I think that's it for uh, getting our hair systems from ZBrush in the Maya uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that little quick tip and definitely keep an eye on the website for more tutorials to come in the future. So thanks a lot. See ya.